today was also known as the Five Loads Sunday, is until we changed. Because actually, we're so happy to have the uh, Deacon have with us who will be explaining how. And so, as we gather together on this day, let us truly rejoice and be happy and to go into the light of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all. Lord Jesus, come into our midst and forgive us all our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, we rejoice as we celebrate soon your resurrection of and salvation for each of us. My sadness. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us all into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Let us pray. And as we pray, I'd like to welcome our uh, viewers of Slide Free Online. Thank you for joining with us as we celebrate this wonderful Sunday. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant we pray that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn preparation, celebrations to come. Draw the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives the reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, of God, forever and ever.
in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever, therefore, among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspects of the clan we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there are captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urge us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. May my tongue cleave to my palate, if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced, if I am not afraid you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the deserts, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through Him. Whoever believes in Him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe 
has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever leaves the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Aloha and good afternoon to all of you. You don't have a smile on your face because we are now wearing color rose in the midst of the reminder of Lent to fast and abstain and have more prayers and give alms in this middle fourth Sunday as we journey into the bridge of Halfway Park and today we have this beautiful message of rejoice this beautiful wonderful gospel story fact that talks about a very very familiar John 3.16 right? I'm sure all of us would have known for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, so that whoever believes in Him will not die, will not perish. And maybe that's the reflection that let's do for this afternoon. Let's have some experiences, and if only we could have a question and answer. Let's, let's talk about love. Isn't that a wonderful topic? All right? Let's talk about love. I think we all can relate when we look at love within the context of human experiences as an intimation, as a glimpse to what God's love is all about. And I think there are about, I would say, five human experiences of love. And I hope you could all relate to this. The first human experience of love is I love. Right? It's the first intimacy that we have, that we are able to declare to our parents, to a friend, but the pastor, to the congregation, to our, what, to our spouses. We are saying in this human condition, human experiences, is I love. But the second is much more powerful. Because in the human experience, in all our relationships of love, the second human experience love is I am love. Isn't that a more profound understanding of love is? When we recall, when we the asthmas and why, the first time that you were in this courting period, right? The relationship that you have with your friends, right? The poor goodness that you see in yourself because Somebody has seen the goodness in you, and you are feeling, I am loved. I'm loved by my parents, by my friends, by my spouse, I'm loved by my children. It is then initiating this love. The third aspect of human experience is not I love or I am loved, but that I am able to see the love in others. And that's why it's very important when we talk about the human condition of the family that the children growing up would experience love because of how they see the love of the mother and the father. And so they understood this human experience of love because of what they see in others. And I'm sure all of us have been influenced by that, right? Our sense of what love is is shaped not just by our own experience, but also by others. And we've seen it as well. The fourth condition that we might say about human experience is how love has been portrayed in the arts, the poets, the music, the sculpture as a product of love. We even, I probably can even ask you, what is your love song? For the husband and the wife. Do you have a love song? That should be a good assignment for you, Victoria. Might maybe ask your parents, what's 
their love song. Maybe when they were starting their relationship or something that's meaningful for them. Right? For you. Were you influenced by music by I don't know, Elvis Presley or the Beatles or poems, quotations? It's better to have love and lost than never to have love at all. Right? Those are glimpses of the human experience of love. But the fifth human experience is just the reality of failure in love. You've seen this in broken homes, broken relationships, in divorce, with so much pain, and yet the people within the context who have experienced the failure to love, deep within them, have this sense of what love is, of what love ought to be, and therefore something so negative can be a positive learning experience because it points us to something that is good. This is the beauty of love, the beauty that we have in relationships. But at times, the context of human relationship is influenced by the weakness, such that many a times love is earned. The love that I have for you is dependent on your behavior. And therefore, many a times, the child will behave, will obey, and there's more love, and more love by the parents express us in a new toy, a new gift, uh, eating outside, right? But once the children misbehave, disobey, what happens to the love? Somehow, it is diminished. And in fact, for me, when I will be reflect on this, somehow every Christmas, that song about Santa Claus making the list, checking it twice, checking who's not your nice. That seems to be not a good message of what love is, because all of a sudden, love is earned. We rejoice this afternoon because we realize God so loved the world. We rejoice because love is a gift. It is freely given to each one of us. When we look at that husband and wife relationship, when love is a gift, nobody forced them to get married. There was no promise of inheritance or a large sum of money, right? When there is the love in sickness and in health, in richer or poorer, right? Whether you have long hair or no hair, the love has no options but the totality of love. Then what happens? Then we feel the goodness of this experience. When love is a gift, when we are not forced to love, once it is freely given, then we give our very selves into this relationship. Why? Because we see the goodness in this wonderful relationship. And that's why here is a message for each one of us. God's love is a gift. It is freely given. We did not deserve for God the Son to become man. We didn't do anything for God the Son in Jesus to be nailed on the cross. We didn't do anything for Jesus to rise from the dead. It's all because of a love that is super abundant, a love that is freely given to each one of us. And when the love is freely given, this gives us what? A true identity of the goodness that we have. God is saying to each one of us today, I love you no matter what. And to demonstrate my love for you, I have become one like you in Jesus Christ. God the Son assumed to all human nature in the incarnation. This is the profound, abundant love. And how do we now respond to this love? We realize when love is a gift, then this love has meaning, has purpose. We are willing 
to risk everything for this love because it is freely given. It is so abundant that we did not deserve. So therefore, it gives us a meaning in life despite the pain, the challenges, we hold on to it. It gives us the true identity of who we are when we respond to this love. And that is why we rejoice. Unfortunately, the world, popular media is telling us love is meant for pleasure. And many a times, this relationship, when the foundation is pleasure, it will crumble. But once the foundation of this relationship is true love, from love that is freely given, when there is the totality of the goodness in this relationship, then we respond in love. As we go on with our Lenten journey, let us pray for the grace to increase our love. That our love as a response to God's love. We come every Sunday to go to Mass. Did we do anything for the bread and wine to become the body and blood of Jesus Christ? No, we didn't. But the Holy Spirit, because of God's love for each one of us, is the Holy Spirit that makes the bread and the wine to become the body. And we, in the sinfulness of His bread, we are able to experience God's love. May we continue to hold on, to rejoice, and to receive God's love in the Eucharist. Thank you very much, Deacon Matthew. Let us now rise and recite our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and insensible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God. May God then not made, not substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glory one, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy family and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. My brothers and sisters, having been reminded how much God our Father loves us, we confidently turn to Him now in prayer. We pray for the Pope. May He continue to guide us in courage and wisdom and His own inspiring example. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. We pray for men and women who have drifted from Christ. May the image of Jesus Christ on the cross give them the courage and to return home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all who suffer in body, mind, and hearts, that they may experience the love and the compassion of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for ourselves, that we may be inspired by God's vision of us as God's work of art. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the members of our community who are sick and homebound, especially Sai Pongro, Aurelia Felipe, our family members, those listed in our parish book of intentions, 
and those who care for them. May they encounter God's holiness and healing in the midst of their trials. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord yeah. Now those who have died, especially Peter Lang, Roland Thom, Diana and Roman Kanya, Beverly Maldonado, Robert Leon, John Marie Fraga, Grant Victor Frey, Sai Fong Tuong Lun, our family members, parishioners, and all souls in purgatory, may enjoy the eternal peace and the rest of God's heavenly home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the intentions of those in the medical field responsible for public health, the doctors, nurses, and all hospital personnel, and those responsible for public safety, especially the firefighters, EMS, police, and military personnel, and for their families worrying at home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of all of us gathered here, those spoken aloud and those in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we have offered this evening in the power of your Holy Spirit. Through the one whom you sent into the world to bring us salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let's all be seated for the altar. Children, 
Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end, we are playing. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the front of all holiness. Holy, therefore, in these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat all of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the challenge. Once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. But this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for men, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. I believe we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Larry our Bishop, all your clergy and religion, and these your faithful, who are here with us this evening in person, and for those who are watching live stream online. Bless all of them and be with them always. Invite them one day to be with you forever. Remember those stricken with the coronavirus disease. Grant them a miraculous recovery, complete health, and a vaccine to eradicate this virus. Remember all of those that are ill and affirmed, whom we are remembering from our prayer of faithful. Remember our benefactors, our people who have been so good, so generous and kind. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Once again, for all of those whose names were written in our prayer of faith, may your Lord welcome them all into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with all the blessed apostles and saints, we have pleased you throughout the ages, we may learn to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And now let us rise at the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, as in your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sin, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. A live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you all. And with you. Thank you, and all for that peace come to come in. Behold, the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I will please say the word, and my soul shall be